the main issue that I have with skeuomorphic things lately is the fact that people are calling things skeuomorphic when they are not. This is the newest trend, so I understand. This is interesting. I disagree with the effect being so close together but not similar, but why not? This is interesting. So this one is recessed. It's a text, it's going under the main page. These two are candy popped above. I feel like you're lacking a tad more effects. I like that. Let me do something quickly. Can I do that? Let's keep yours original thing here and I'm going to break everything. I'm going to remove all the effects and start from scratch. So if you have your element that is flat and you want to make it bouncy and more like raised, bubbly-ish, you do what you have done, which is you add an inner shadow. It's going to be at the top with a massive amount of blur and you just make that white. And the thing that I have a bit of an issue with yours is that it's not bright enough, I think, to convey that it is highlighting the top. So I would highly recommend you to potentially double that top section with maybe a bit less blur and maybe a bit less to just really highlight the thing. And then you are going to need the same thing at the bottom to expand it. But that's another thing. The drop shadow that you have or could have, I feel like is going to be better if it's a diffuse shadow to really separate the cards from the background in the first place. And then after that, add some other shadow things. So when once that is done to really separate it from the background and really showcase that the top is highlighted, I can now add a real drop shadow that is probably going to be at like 12, 20, I don't know, a blur of 16, a spread of minus 8. I'm thinking blue dark because the picture is blue in the first place. And then some of the things that I see is that the inner shadow here is highlighting the entirety of the sides and I don't want that. So in order to avoid that, I'm going to red negatively spread the top shadow at minus 8 and then bump its depth to 12. And then this one is going to be that stronger potentially. The minus 8 is a bit strong. So let's just do minus. We still have a bit of a highlight on the sides. Going to make that at 80%. And then you have the same thing, as I said, in the at the bottom. So it's going to be an inner shadow reversed. So minus whatever. Let's do minus 8 with a blur of 8 and a spread of minus four right there and to do the same thing the same effect it's going to duplicate this and make it sharp of eight a distance of minus four and a spread of one and because it's black I'm going to reduce that to eight percent in opacity same thing here 12 percent in opacity so that it's not as strong the main difference and i still don't like the bottom section but whatever the main difference difference that i have is that my highlight at the top is stronger but when you just do the highlight stronger and you don't have the, the massive drop shadow underneath it doesn't pop as much so your effect that you have added right there works because you have the rays of God type of thing in the background. That's interesting, but it's also not necessarily good. And if you wanted to have a very specific highlight or a highlighted element, you can always have on top of your fill right here, a secondary option, which would be like a white thing. Let's do it 100% for now. So it makes sense. And from here, I'm going to do a radial gradient that is going to be at the top with a bit of a directional thing. Maybe you can always have have one of these. I like the thing. It's an option. And if you just wanted to highlight like a very specific point in your top section, you can do that as well. I really don't like the bottom shadow thingy. I feel like it's not strong enough. It's really weird because I'm going to want to have that in, in an overlay format or in a multiply format to make the things darker, but it's just not going to work. Not entirely going to work. And also, if this is that strong, I need a secondary like drop shadow again to ensure that the actual shadow underneath matches with the amount. So if the bottom of my element is really dark, it means the drop shadow that is going to be underneath is also going to be really dark so that it makes sense. But maybe something like this. Um, negative spread is really useful. It's a way to ensure that either the shadow is just slightly showing up on the sides 
or really a lot for drop shadow, for example. So if I added like a new drop shadow that is going to be red at 100% that you can see it. If I'm just having a blur of 80, that's basic. But I want to keep my color at 100%. I don't want the spread of the shadow to be that much. I can just do a minus 40 and it will just highlight with the edges of my shadows. It's the same thing for the bottom element. So one of the rules or thing that we used to do was having a secondary element underneath your buttons. So what we used to have was this in red, as always, which is my button. And in order to have a drop shadow that was the same color as my button, I needed to duplicate my layer and then had an effect of a layer blur. That secondary element underneath my first was creating that negative spread. And then we discovered that the negative spread was an option in Sketch. And then Figma didn't have it. And one day they added it. And now it's just, it's a normal thing. It's just, it's a good way to ensure that your shadow is underneath and not bleeding through too much on the edges. Tiny details. Going back to the candy thing that I just did here, I feel like it would benefit to these buttons as well. This one is really cool. It looks close to the one that I did some months ago. These ones, which I feel like is the same effect that you wanted to have with the transparency and the colors, colorful drop shadow type of thing. So it's cool. I feel like this let's talk feels out of place and that that blue specifically feels out of place to me. I do understand it because it's the background there, but it's just, I feel like it should be that blue here as well to keep the main action, the main color, the main thing. But yeah, I like the effect that you have, like specifically this tiny highlight right there is really cute.